Alexa, off. Good morning. Today is Wednesday, May 20th. And we're going to start with our reader's notebook pages today. And then we'll go on and do our math lesson for today and tomorrow. And then I'll also get the social studies done for the week. And so this will be the last video of the week. Um, just to help you if you want to get ahead a little bit before the Memorial Day weekend and enjoy a nice long weekend. That would be all your hard work paying off. So let's go ahead. I'm going to grab my reader's notebook pages. Adjust my screen just a little bit. And so on our reader's notebook pages, we are going to be working on pages, let's see here, 179, 180, 81, and 182. All right. So, page 189, you are going to do all, refer back to the contraction pages if you cannot remember how to do it. Let's go ahead and look at 180. That's proper nouns. Remember, proper nouns have to begin with a capital letter. They are names of specific places, people, things, holidays, books. So following the instructions up here, I want you to do all. You only have to write the proper noun on the line, okay? And you have to write it correctly. Proofreading, you're gonna underline five mistakes of the spelling of contractions, review, and then you're gonna correct. You can write the contraction only. Correction, you don't have to rewrite the whole sentence, okay? Um, and then on page 182, go ahead and cross off 182. You do not need to complete that page. So that was our reader's notebook. Those of you, I will also have the test assigned shortly after this video so that if you want to get your reading test done for the week, <coughs> you may do so. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Got the sneezes. All right. So yesterday we did lesson 20. So let's go ahead. Let's see what I got here. 18, 19, 17, 20. So we're going to start with lesson 20 exit ticket today. Use your square unit tiles to build as many rectangles as you can with the perimeter of eight units. Well, you don't have square unit tiles. So let's multiply, let's do our factors. Oh, perimeter, not area. See, I almost messed up again. Let's think about what is half of eight. Four. Now think about all the combinations that you can use that add up to four. And then you will um, estimate to draw your rectangles. And don't forget to label your side lengths. Remember our... Unit is units today. It doesn't have centimeters or inches. And then here, you're going to find the area of those rectangles. So, A, B, label your rectangles A, B, and C, and find the area. Remember, area equals length times width. All right, so I'll give you a minute to go ahead and get that done. If you need more time when I begin, please pause the video. Oh. 
Oh, goodness. All right, let's go ahead, pause the video if you need more time. Okay, so we're going to be working on this data sheet because we are gonna need this data sheet for tomorrow. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna set this data sheet just here because I need to make sure that I still have it, okay? And we're gonna go ahead and work on lesson 21 application problem. We are going to do a four square. RDW, okay. Mr. Zek will use 14 feet of tape to mark a rectangle on the gym wall. Okay, so we know it's a rectangle. Draw several rectangles that Mr. Zek could make with her tape. Label the width and length of each rectangle. So what is half of 14? Seven. So let's go ahead and figure out what our lengths and widths of our perimeter of our rectangle could be. One plus six equals seven. Two plus five equals seven. Three plus four equals seven. So those are the three rectangles we can draw. One by six. So that's one foot by six feet. We have a two by five. Two feet by five feet. And we have a three by four. So we have labeled the width and the length of each rectangle. We drew them all. We've done everything it has asked. We do not have to um, do the third box, fourth box. Okay, if you need more time, go ahead and pause the video. Lesson 21. So we're going to keep the data sheet right next to us so that we can record our data. So the data we gathered from lesson 20 and 21 to complete the charts below from the rectangle you create from with a given perimeter. You might not use all the spaces in the charts. All right. So on your centimeter grid paper, exit ticket, here is our grid paper. Let's go ahead and pull this out. Okay, shade and label as many rectangles as you can with a perimeter of 16 centimeters. So I'm going to just do a little line here. And what is half of 16? Eight. All right, so thinking about that, what numbers can I add together to equal eight? One plus seven equals eight. 2 plus 6 equals 8. 3 plus 5 equals 8. 4 plus 4 equals 8. Now, you have to draw these four, and then you're going to have to do them with a perimeter of 18. So you want to make sure that you are using your space well so you have enough room to draw all of these rectangles. So first we're gonna draw a one by seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, one centimeter by seven centimeters. Okay, now we're going to draw a two by six, two by six, and we're going to label it two centimeters by six centimeters. And then we have a three by five.
And finally, we have a four by four. All right, so now it says sketch. So we did it here, and now we're gonna re-sketch these over here and label our side lengths. So we're gonna draw these four rectangles over here. One centimeter by seven centimeters, two centimeters by six centimeters, three centimeters by five centimeters. Now look at, see how they're gradually getting smaller, just like on my graph paper. Okay, same models. All right, find the area of each rectangle you drew. Because I used very little space, I'm going to say area equals 7 times 1, area equals 7 centimeters squared, okay? Now I'm going to find the area of this one, area equals 6 times 2, area equals 12 centimeters squared, area equals 5 times 3, Area equals 15 centimeters squared. Area equals four times four, which equals 16 centimeters squared. So there, now I've done the area of all four of those. And I have plenty of room and it's nice and neat and organized, okay. On your centimeter grid paper, shade and label as many rectangles as you can with a perimeter of 18 centimeters. What is one half of 18? Correct, nine. So we need to find all the factors we can to add up to nine. Remember, adding up to nine. So one plus eight, two plus seven, three, plus six, four, plus five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, so now we're going to go over to our grid paper and we're going to sketch these. Now I'm gonna use a blue pen on these ones just so I can see the difference. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh, look at that, nine. And I'm gonna label the sides one centimeter by nine centimeters. Then I have two by seven. There's two. And if this is nine, this is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and I'm gonna label. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my three by six. Three, three, and finally my four by five. Four, five. All right, there we go. Now again, I have to go ahead and sketch these and label the side lengths. So I have a one by nine, one centimeter by nine, or eight centimeters. Seven, eight, oh, that one was wrong, okay. Eight, there we go. One by eight centimeters, and then a two by seven centimeters. And then a three by six centimeters. Four 
And then over here, I'm going to just go down here and do my 4 by 5 and then I'm going to do my areas just like I did over here. Okay, so 4 by 5 centimeters. And now I need to find the area. Area equals 8 times 1 equals 8 centimeters squared. Area equals 7 times 2 equals 14 centimeters squared. Area equals 3 times 6, which equals 18 centimeters squared. And area equals 4 times 5, which equals 20 centimeters squared. All right, so we've done all of the front page. If you need more time to finish that, go ahead and pause the video. It says, use the centimeter grid paper to shade in as re many rectangles as you can with the given perimeters. So we have 10 and 20. Well, perimeter. So what is half of 10? Five. So let's just do this. Half of 10 is five. So we have one centimeter plus four centimeters. Two centimeters plus three centimeters. And that's it, right? Now we have to figure out the area. One times four is four square centimeters. Two times three is six square centimeters. So how many rectangles can we make? Two. All right, so over here, so we're gathering our data. So we have to repeat this same information over here. So I'm gonna say, but this is units, okay? So we're gonna say two units plus three units is five units, and then our area was six units squared, okay? And we made two. Okay, so remember, we're collecting data on this one. So if we do it over here, so we have 20 over here, and we have 20 here. So we will transfer this data over here. All right, so let's go ahead and half of 20 is 10. One plus nine, two centimeters plus eight centimeters, three centimeters plus seven centimeters, four centimeters plus six centimeters, and five centimeters plus five centimeters. Okay, so how many rectangles can we make? One, two, three, four, five. Now we need to multiply to find our area. 2 times 8 is 16 centimeters squared. 3 times 7 is 21 centimeters squared. 4 times 6 is 24 centimeters squared. 5 times 5 is 25 centimeters squared. But now we know we need to transfer this information to my data chart. All right, so we're gonna put our five here. One unit and nine units, which is nine units squared. I'm gonna do the abbreviation UN for units. So then I'm gonna say two, three, four, five. And my label, Five, six, seven, eight. And then 16, nope, yep, 16, 21, 24, 25. And go back and add my label. Just like that. So remember, we're collecting data. The next one says, did we make a square with either of these perimeters? Now remember a square has equal sides. So if we look here, there are no squares here because our sides are not equal. 
let's look over here. Did we make a square here? Yes, because we have five and five. Yes, five centimeters by five centimeters because all sides are equal, okay? All right, so Macy and Gavin both draw rectangles with perimeters of 16 centimeters. Use words and pictures to explain how it is possible for them to have the same perimeter but different area. Well, what's half of 16? Eight. So we could have one plus seven, two plus six, three plus five, and four plus four. So we are showing here that their perimeters are going to be the same, but obviously their areas will be different. Okay. So I'm gonna give you a second to go ahead and fill that out. I'll be right back. All right, so you could pick any two. I'm gonna do the two by six. Six centimeters by two centimeters. And then I'm gonna do a four by four. The area of the two by six is six times two equals 12 centimeters squared. And the area of the four by four equals 16 centimeters squared. So now we need to explain how they can have different areas but have the same perimeter. So if the side lengths are different than the area is different. However, the perimeter is still the same, period. All right, so the perimeter is still the same, even though we can see that the area will be different. So this one was 16 centimeters. So if we go back over to our data sheet, we can see 16 here. How many rectangles did we make? Four. So we can go ahead and copy our data. One, two, three, four units. Uh, four, five, six, seven units. And if we multiply those together, we get seven units squared, 12 units squared, 15 units squared, 
and 16 units squared. So now we've already done all the math for all of these three. All right. So let's go ahead and I'm going to grab my lesson 20 and see if there's any more of these that we can fill in on our data sheet. Well, our first one that we did yesterday in our problem set was 12. So we figured out that we can make three. And I'm just going to copy this information over one unit plus five units two units plus four units because half of 12 is six remember and three units plus three units now let's multiply one times five is five units squared two times four is eight units squared and three times three is nine units squared okay so that takes care of the 12. let's look at the back we didn't do the 14 yesterday, but we could quickly do it here. So what is half of 14? Seven. So one unit plus six units, two units plus five units, three units plus four units, and that's all we can do. So how many did we make? Three. Let's go ahead and multiply. One times six is six units squared, two times five is 10 units squared, and three times four is 12 units squared. And there, we're done with that one. And then, did we have an 18 somewhere? Because that's the last one that we have to do. That was eight. Was 14. All right. Well, we could quickly do the 18 so that we have the data in case we need it. So half of 18 is 9. So our width would be 1 unit plus 8 units. We did an 18. I remember this. 2 units plus 7 units, 3 units plus 6 units, um, 4 units plus 5 units. So we can make 4. Now let's go back and multiply. 1 times 8 is 8 units squared. 2 times 7 is 14 units squared. 3 times 6 is 18 units squared. And 4 times 5 is 20 units squared. So now we have all of our data ready for lesson 22. Okay. So let's go ahead and while well, we have our exit ticket out, on the grid below, shade and label two different rectangles with a perimeter of 20. Please use the data sheet from here to do this, okay? Use them. They are a tool, okay? Pause the video now. Going on to lesson 22. So here is all of our data, and we're going to create a line plot today. Yay, how fun is that? Use the data you gathered from your problem sets to create a line plot for the number of rectangles you created with a given perimeter. Well, we have 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. So I'm going to turn my paper and I'm going to just make little tick marks. So that's 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20, okay? So that is where my line plot is going to start. Now, one X equals one rectangle. So with my perimeter of 10, I was able to make two rectangles. So that's two X's. <coughs> 
with my 12, I was able to make three. One, two, three. 14, I was able to make three. One, two, three. Make sure these are nice and neat. Now four, 16, I could make four. One, two, three, four. 18, I was able to make four. One, two, three, four. And on 20, I could make five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so we have plotted. It says, why are all the perimeter measurements even? Okay. Do all the rectangles have an even perimeter? So did all of our rectangles have an even perimeter? Yes, so if all the perimeters are even, are even because all the side lengths are whole numbers. That means we didn't use any fractions in our side lengths or decimals, okay? They're all whole numbers. So when you double the sum, you get an even number. Could we have an odd perimeter? Yeah, and we can find that out by using a string to measure, right? But this is asking why they are all even. Well, they're all whole numbers, and when we double a whole number, we get an even number, okay? Let's look at the back side of 22. Compare, ugh. Compare the two line plots that we created. Oh, we have to go back to 19. I don't know where 19, I don't have, do I have 19 here? 19, 19. Okay, here is the line plot from 19. Okay. And here is the line plot from 22. So compare the two line plots we created. Is there any reason to think that not that knowing only the area of the rectangle would help you figure out its perimeter or knowing only the perimeter of the rectangle would help you figure out its area? So just by looking at these, could we figure out the area? No because there is no connection between area and perimeter. Because we can see, you can have the same perimeter three different times, but the area is gonna be different every time. So, you know, knowing one does not help you figure out the other. Sumi uses unit square tiles to build three rectangles that have an area of 32 square units. Does knowing this help her find the number of rectangles she can build for the perimeter of 32 square units? No. It does not. Okay. Knowing the number of rectangles that she built with an area of 32 square units does not help her find the number of rectangles. She can build for a perimeter of 32 units 
if you have 32 units to get 16, there will be three pairs of numbers that add up to 16, okay? But knowing the area, she can't do that, okay? It's just not possible. All right, and then George draws three rectangles that have a perimeter of 14 centimeters. Alicia tells George that there are more than three rectangles that have a perimeter of 14 centimeters. Explain why she is correct. Okay, she is correct because George probably only drew the rectangles with whole number side lengths. Could he draw more if he had fractions? Yes, okay. If he had fractions like halves and one-fourth and three-fourths, definitely could definitely have more than three. But as long as we're only using whole numbers, three is the only number they can get. All right, so we'll do 22 exit ticket next week. Let's look at, I know I want you to do all of 21 homework. Let's look at number 22 homework. Um, I only want you to do question one on quest on number 22, homework. Number one on homework only, okay? All right, and that is our math for the week. We are done with math for the week. So we're gonna finish up our social studies for the week now. I know this video is like super long, but we're gonna power through this and you can take breaks and come back and finish. So we have our social studies and last night I was looking at this and we literally have three sections to finish. Um, I will go through and add these orange pieces on next week and I'll do this pink section next week. But today we're going to do the Great Plains and we're going to read about the Southeast. You can go ahead and color your map, different colors of what we've talked about. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read to you about the Great Plains. All right. I am missing my Southeast pictures, so we'll make it work. So the Great Plains. The Native American Indians of the Great Plains lived on the flat, grassy land between the Rocky Mountains and the Mississippi River. This region is cold in the winter and hot in the summer. It did not have many trees, but it did have many animals, including buffalo, deer, and antelope. Great Plains Indians were hunters and gatherers. Many tribes were nomadic. They traveled around the plains following the buffalo, which they depended on for daily living. They hunted buffalo and dried the meat for eating. Buffalo skins were used for clothing, blankets, and shelter. They did not let any part of the buffalo go to waste. Since the Plains Indians moved around a lot, they needed shelter that could be easily transported from place to place. They built teepees out of long wooden poles covered by buffalo hides that were sewn together. When it was time to move, they would take down their teepee and carry it along with their other belongings in a wooden sled called a travoy. The travoy was pulled by a dog or a horse. Horses made travel and hunting much easier. Some Plains Indians tribes built more permanent homes. They lived in dome-shaped lodges that were made of grass and mud. They planted and traded crops such as beans, pumpkins, corn, and squash. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull out all of my little tickets, tags for my Great Plains, and I'm going to set this aside so that I can fill out these correctly. All right, so I'm gonna start with environment. And our environment that we read was a flat, grassy land. Okay, there were not very many trees.
And they had cold winters and hot summers. Okay, so that was environment. Next, I'm going to go on to clothing. And we learned that their clothing was made from buffalo skin. Okay. Next, I'm going to talk about transportation. So how did they get from one place to another? They used dog sleds. They had horses. Oh, I spelled horses wrong. And they had travoys to move their belongings. Okay, so that was their transportation. I'm going to put other to the side and move on to food. So what types of food did they eat? Well, they ate buffalo, deer, antelope, beans, pumpkin, corn, and squash. Okay. Now we're going to talk about where did they live. Well, they lived in teepees. Which was a long wooden poles that were covered in buffalo hide. And they also had dome shaped lodges. made of grass and mud. Now, what was the difference between these two types of housing? These were easy to take down and move, right? So they were pretty temporary. These were more permanent. It was probably pretty hard to take down a dome-shaped lodge with all the grass and mud. So we got to keep that in mind when we're talking about their um, housing and why they chose different types. You know, the teepees were really easy to take down and move to another place. However, the dome-shaped lodges were more permanent. They had to leave those behind. And finally, we need to remember that the Great Plains Indians were nomadic, which means that they followed the buffalo herds. So they probably had more teepees than dome shape um, housing, right? All right, so that's the first section that we're going to go over today. Um, I'm going to skip uh, the southeast, and I'm going to go up, and we're going to do the eastern woodlands next. Okay, and then I will do the southeast um, next week. So if you need more time to finish writing those out, pause the video now and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to read to you about the Eastern Woodlands. So just press play when you're ready to go on to the Eastern Woodlands. All right. The Eastern Woodland Indians lived in the northeastern part of the United States in the area between the Atlantic Ocean and the Mississippi River. The region has four seasons, 
Natural resources were abundant in this area because it was filled with lush forests, rivers, streams, and ocean coastlines. These Indians traveled by foot. They also built light canoes from cedar, wood, and birch bark. In the eastern woodland region, Native Americans built their homes in the forest among the hills and valleys. They built two types of shelters using hardwood trees as oak, maple, and birch. Some families live in wigwams. Wigwams were made from small trees that were bent over in the dome shape and then covered with birch bark. Other groups of families lived in longhouses. Longhouses were made from the same material, but were much longer. These Indians hunted for food in the forest. They ate deer, bear, wild turkey, beaver, and squirrels. They also were able to grow corn, squash, and beans. After they killed an animal for food, they prayed for the animal to use all the parts to make clothing and tools. They wore clothing made from deer skins and hides, and they made capes out of turkey feathers sewn together with roots. Woodland Indians sometimes wore masks to scare away evil spirits. It is also believed that they first created the dream catcher, which was used for protection while they slept. All right, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to move my orange piece down here because I'm going to do this top section first. So we have the eastern woodlands. Okay, so we're going to start with <clears throat> the environment and we're going to fill out the environment tab first. All right, so our environment, first we learned that there were four seasons. So they had fall, winter, spring, and summer. They had super lush forests, rivers, streams, and ocean coastlines. So they had lots going on, didn't they, to their benefit? If we look at our map, we can see here's our eastern woodlands. They've got lakes and rivers, and here's the ocean over here. So they were, they were set, okay? They had lots of access to plenty of food, right? So now let's look at our clothing tab. For our clothes, they use deer skin. And the hides. They also use turkey feathers for capes that they sewed on with roots. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about their shelter. Where did they live? Well, they lived in wigwams or longhouses. And a longhouse was the same as a wigwam, except it was longer. Okay. Uh, what did they eat? They ate deer. Bear, turkey, beaver, squirrels. Beans, corn, squash. Transportation. They traveled by foot or canoes made of cedar wood or birch bark, okay? And finally, they wore masks to scare away and they made the dream catcher for protection. All right. So that's our Eastern Woodlands, and that is it for today. If you need more time, you know the routine. Pause the video. Go ahead and get your map colored. Next week, we will finish this up, and I will take an overall grade for neatness 
and how much time and care you took it to do a good job. And I will uh, talk to you guys next week. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. There is no school on Monday, so I will catch you on Tuesday. Bye-bye for now.